Did you tell Hoyt to torch the back of the all right, everybody. All right, everybody. Let's go ahead and everybody be quiet. Settle down here. And we'll get ready to get started here. Our third night of Bible school. How many of y'all have had a good time so far? Amen. Boys, have y'all had a good time? Yeah! Girls, have y'all had a good time? Adults. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Boys, have y'all had a good time? Yeah. Girls? Yeah. Adults? Yeah. Yeah. We've had two good nights. We've had two good nights of Bible school so far. Fixing to start the third night here. I believe we're going to have a good time tonight. Amen. 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 All right, I tell you what, everybody, let's go ahead and be quiet. Bow our heads and close our eyes so we can pray for the service here tonight. Boys on the back row, bow your heads and close your eyes. All right. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for all your blessings. Lord, we thank you for the last two nights of. Vacation Bible School, Lord, we thank you for how you moved and how you blessed us, Lord. And thank you for the seven that's gotten saved so far this week. God, we thank you for that. God, we just thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I pray that you just have your will and your way here tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that you bless all the singing, all the fun, all the fellowship. God, I just pray, Lord, that your will be done here tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Time for our penny march, all right? So, girls, I put y'all's money in this red Coke bottle. So, y'all go ahead and come on up, girls, and bring your change and put it in the Coke bottle. You got some? You got some? Now, on Friday night, Friday night, we're going to wave these, these Coke bottles and see who wins, okay? So, boys, y'all going to work hard because right now, I was looking at it today. The girls are a little bit ahead, so y'all got to get your pennies in here. Hey, 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 Yes, 
three, four, Everybody stand up straight. Put your hand over your heart. All right, and this one will probably move pretty quick again here tonight, okay? All right, so let's get ready to go. One, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I make it a lamp to my feet, a light unto my path, and words of a high to my heart. And then this one's going to go very slow. Yeah. 
Everybody go ahead and stand up. Everybody go ahead and stand up. Alright, John, it depends on you to show them the hand motions tonight. Alright, All right, so how many of y'all know Zoom Zoom? Me. I tell you what, we'll do it, let's do it two times, alright? That way for the ones who don't know it, that way the one hey! That way the ones who don't know it, they can catch on, okay? Alright, John, are you ready to get started there with Zoom Zoom? Alright, here we go. You guys ready? Yeah! Oh my gosh, guys. Are y'all ready, boys? Yeah! I think. <laughs> 
Alright? Okay, well, we'll do this. We'll do the same way. We'll sing it two times. That way everybody can try to catch on, okay? Alright, it's been a long time since we've seen it.
guys. Uh, so far this week, we've covered two miracles of Jesus. And Brother Jonathan's going to share with you tonight another miracle of Jesus here tonight. So y'all pay close attention uh, to the preaching here tonight, the teaching here tonight. And I promise you, if you pay close attention, you'll learn something. And it might pay off in the end okay, if you pay attention. Pay close attention because there might be questions. I know what you mean. And it might be king. <laughs> All right, who has the Bible? Okay, good. I'm glad you have the Bible. All right. If you would, uh, take your Bibles turn to Mark chapter number 4. Mark chapter number 4. All right, Mark chapter number 4, and uh, we'll start at verse number 35. Mark 4, 35. <clears throat> Mark 4.35, uh, we're going to start reading. The Bible says, And the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto, unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Verse 38, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Verse 41, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our many blessings, God. I thank you for everyone who's here tonight. God, I pray that you just uh, use this lesson here. Lord, I pray that we can take the pause for our hearts and our lives, God, and, uh, that we would better serve you. With Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, like you said, this week we've already uh, gone over a couple of miracles. And so, if you don't know what the theme of this week is, uh, I don't know what your problem is. But it's uh, Jesus to the rescue, right? Yeah. And so, uh, what it, Jesus to the rescue is... Uh, this week we're talking about uh, the miracle, some of the miracles of Jesus Christ and how in impossible situations, or what we see as impossible situations, Jesus Christ can come in and perform a miracle and do the impossible, right? And so we see uh, him change water into wine, and then we see uh, him be able to allow a crippled man to walk. And then here, if we, if we um, look at these verses, we, we see that he calms the storm, all right? And so uh, if we look here, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, they decide to go uh, across the way. They decide to cross over the Sea of Galilee, right? And so Jesus had been teaching uh, the whole day. He had been teaching and, and, and uh, going over and, and, and teaching uh, huge crowds and, and teaching his disciples. And so they were going to cross over to the Sea of Galilee and go on to the other side so, you know, he could continue his ministry, right? And so uh, Jesus, as any person would be, uh, doing their work all day. He's tired, right? He wants to go to sleep. Any, any of you guys, you know, if you're tired, you want to go to sleep? Amen. No, just me. Okay. All right. And so he was tired. He wanted to go to sleep. And so he went into the ship, and they decided to cross over. And where was Jesus at? He was in the bottom of the ship, asleep. And then uh, the disciples, right? So everyone's, uh, they're all on the, on the ship, and there are uh, other ships falling in behind them uh, to get over to the other side. And so a big storm comes, right? The Bible tells us uh, in, in different uh, Gospels, uh, the accounts there, and Matthew, it, it, the tempest, and, and they, they, they all describe it as a great storm. Uh, the winds were blowing. I think about uh, this week. I think about the storms that we had uh, Monday. Uh, the, the, the storm that we had Monday was, was very great. Uh, the wind was blowing super hard. Uh, I had my umbrella outside. I was going outside to take care of some stuff, and the wind blew. And my umbrella flipped inside out, and, you know, it was pouring rain. And I had to go inside and change my clothes because I was soaked. And so we think of these storms, and, and it's uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, rain and heavy winds and uh, lightning and thunder. And it, and it seems like a scary thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and we have homes. We're, we're in our homes, right, whenever it's storming. We're in a building, or uh, maybe we're in the, in the car. And if we're driving the car, the storm can be, uh, the winds can be very great and the water can come down and we just pull over, right? And just kind of hold it there for a minute, maybe let the storm go by. But when you think about it, these men, they're on a ship, right? They're on this boat. That's a very dangerous place to be whenever there's a storm. Now, a lot of these men, they were fishermen, uh, and this is what they did. They, uh, a storm wasn't new to them, right? But for them to be so afraid, for them to be so scared, 
the storm had to be something great, right? Yeah. The the way the waves were crashing. The Bible says, if we look at uh, verse 30, uh, 37, it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. So imagine this, you're on the ship, uh, and, and you're just trying to cross over the sea to, to get out, um, to get to another piece of land, another piece of dry land, and then a storm comes in, and, and there's thunder and lightning, and you, you hear the, the wind blowing so hard, it's tossing the ship to and fro, the waves are crashing so much, it's starting to fill up the boat. The Bible says the boat was now full. Now what happens when a, when a boat gets full, right? It sinks. It sinks. So, these men, they were on this boat, and their boat was now full. Their boat was full. And so logic tells you they're about to be underwater. And so they're scared. They're, they're crying out. They don't know uh, uh, what to do. It seems like they're surely going to die. And they begin to cry out. They begin to cry out to Jesus Christ. They know that he's on the boat. And they begin to cry out. They come in and they, they burst in and they, they're crying. They say, do you not care that we perish? Do you not care that we're going to die? I think a lot of people, uh, they, they, they get in these hard situations. And, uh, they, they feel like... They're in their own storm, and, and, and their boat is full, and they, it, it feels like they're sinking, and the waves are crashing too hard for them to handle. And they cry out to God, do you not care that I perish? Do you not care that I'm suffering? I think a lot of people, uh, uh, they, they, uh, sometimes people, they get in a situation that is too overwhelming, and a lot of people want to kind of blame God. But Jesus says when he awakes, the Bible says that he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So, we see here that, that the waves were crashing so hard that this boat was going to sink. That these men surely thought that they were going to die. They thought that there was no way out. They were screaming. They were uh, crying out to God. And all Jesus did, He spoke, and everything stopped. He spoke. He spoke, and the wind stopped. That's good. And the waves stopped. It says there was a great calm. The wind stopped blowing. The waves stopped crashing. It was a gentle water. They no longer uh, had the fear for the lives throwing out buckets of water, uh, trying to throw it out faster than it filled in. They no longer had to uh, cry out to God and beg Him to save their lives because they thought they were going to drown. There was a still. There was a peace. There was a, a calm. He said, "Peace be still," and the winds and the, and the winds and the waves obeyed. They listened to what God had to say. So this proved how powerful Jesus Christ was. He is God in the flesh. We see that these uh, men, uh, they were in a storm and they thought they were going to die. The waves were crashing. It seemed too hard. The lightning, I'm sure, was scaring them. The thunder, I'm sure, was scaring them. Uh, everything on their boat, was, was uh, they were getting flung around. They were soaked. They were uh, All their stuff, they were losing their possessions. They were going to lose the boat. They were going to uh, lose everything. They were going to have nothing. And eventually, they weren't going to have their life. But they called out to God. Maybe they didn't do it in the, in the, uh, the best way. Maybe they didn't uh, uh, approach it in the best way. But they called out to God in their time of need. They were scared. They were frightened. Any, any normal person would be frightened, right? If you're on a boat and you thought this thing's going to turn upside down, you're going to go to the bottom of the ocean, I mean, I'd be crying out too because it's a scary thing. And so they were crying out to God. They were crying out to Him. And He spoke and He said, Peace be still. But He says... And in verse 40 he said, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now I said it's, it's normal for us to be scared, right? It's normal for us to be scared. Yeah. But also, they should have known who was on that boat with them, right? Yeah. They, were, they were walking with God in the flesh. They were listening to his uh, teachings. They were seeing the miracles that he was doing. They were seeing who he is. And he says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? How is, it that you, how is it that you have no faith? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, uh, they go through their lives and they go through situations. They have family troubles, uh, financial troubles. Uh, whatever the troubles are that we have, we face. Um, and yet, we, a lot of people, they don't truly have that faith that God's going to take care of them. You're right. Right? But we should know who's on the ship with us, right? He may be asleep. It may seem like he's not listening to us, right? Sometimes it, may, it might seem like he's not listening to us. Sometimes it might seem like he's asleep there, like he's uh, just taking a break. But we got to know who's on that on that ship with us. We got to know who's there with us, because when he does wait and when he does speak, the storm stops, the wind stops, the waves stop, and you can scoop all that water out, and you can save yourself, save your boat, save your possessions, and you can. 
uh, continue to sail. They might have been able to drop that anchor there, maybe in the storm, whenever the storm was crashing, but they were still being tossed to and fro. It's a dangerous thing, uh, these storms, especially on a boat. It's very dangerous. And so, uh, when spiritually, we're in a, we're, a lot of times we get in these storms, and maybe sometimes we can go through the storm. We can just kind of ride through it. We can push through it and get to the other side. And then there are some storms where we have to anchor down and sit and wait it out. And then some of them, we have to cry out to God and beg that He would stop the storm. And so I don't know what storm uh, we have. I don't know what storm that you have. But I know that Jesus Amen. Christ can say, peace be still and stop Amen. the storm. Amen. 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 He can stop the winds from blowing. Yeah. He can stop the waves from crashing. He can stop your boat from sinking. Right. All we have to do is we have to cry out to God. We have to ask God. The Bible says you have not because you ask God. We have to ask God to take care of our situations. Give them to God. We all go through storms. We all have situations that we go through. We all have family problems. We all have uh, financial problems. We may not have the same ones, but we all have them. We all have these problems. And so we have to uh, rely on God. We have to not be so fearful, but we have to have that faith that He would wake up and say, Be still. And uh, that's all that. Tell me what sea, the name of the sea that they were crossing. say what did Jesus say to make the storm stop peace be still peace be still boys who was on the ship with Jesus something totally impossible take something totally impossible and make it possible then last night you heard the story about the man that was paralyzed and he couldn't walk and he wanted to get to Jesus so that he could be healed and so he could walk again and his four friends came by and picked him up on his bed and carried him to the house where Jesus was at carried him up on top of the roof and tore a hole in it lowered him down so that he could get to Jesus and be healed. 
Jesus can do anything. And then tonight you hear the story about how the disciples were on the boat and the storm was coming and the boat filled up with water and they were scared but they cried out to Jesus. Same thing as if we were praying to Jesus. And they asked Jesus to help. And Jesus helped them and saved their lives. I want to tell you tonight that what Jesus did for them, Jesus could do for you. Jesus came and He died on the cross for our sins. Sin is everything that we've ever done in our life that's bad. And Jesus came and He took our sin. He took all the bad things that you've done and all the bad things that I've done. And He went to the cross and He died on the cross. He shed His blood so that our sins, all the bad stuff we've ever done, could be washed away. Not only that, they took Jesus' body off the cross and placed His body in the grave, in the tomb. And three days later, Jesus arose from the dead. Three days later, Jesus arose from the dead. Three days later, Jesus arose from the dead. And the Bible tells us that if we put our faith and our trust, if we trust in what Jesus did for us, if we believe that He died for our sins and that He was buried, and that God raised Him from the dead three days later, and we believe in that and trust in that to get us to heaven, because that's the only way to heaven is through what Jesus did for us. And if we trust in that, we'll be saved. We won't have to go to hell and burn forever, but we'll get to go to heaven and spend forever with Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you to know tonight that Jesus can do whatever He wants to. He can help you. Whatever it is that you're going through, Jesus can take care of it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. I want to ask you some questions here tonight. And I want you to be honest with yourself and be honest with Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody look around. The only ones that's looking around is me and Jesus. I want to ask you this. If you were to die today, if this was your last day on earth, if you were to die today, if that were to happen, and you're not 100% sure that you'd go to heaven, won't you raise your hand? Just want to pray for you. Is there anybody like here tonight say, Preacher, that's me. I'm not sure. See that hand. Anybody else? Say, Preacher, that's me. I'm not sure. If I were to die today, I'm not 100% sure that I'd go to heaven. I see that hand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. I saw a couple hands go up. Is there anybody else like this? Say, Preacher, that's me. I'm not sure. Now, here's what I want you to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. Those that raised their hands and said, Preacher, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This is exactly what Bible school is all about. Those that raised their hands and said, I'm not sure. I want you to step out and come up to where I'm at and somebody will take the Bible and show you how you can know for sure. I need a mail worker. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Somebody will come around. Got some boys up here. Let me ask you this. Every head bowed, every eye closed. A lot of times we, we don't think about this when it comes to kids, but I'm going to ask this tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I wonder, is there anybody here tonight that you just, you're going through a real hard time? Just some things going on in your life and it's got you, got you worried, got you concerned, got you a little upset. Is there anybody like you're not saying, Preacher, that's me. I'm just going through some things. I don't understand it. It's different. I see those hands. There's a couple hands. Adults, we, sometimes we don't think about that, but kids go through some things too. You know what? Jesus can take whatever it is in your life and He can take care of it and make it all better all again. He can do that. To, one, to those that raised their hands and said that they just, just have some things going on in their life, if you want Jesus to help you, then we do exactly like the disciples did in the story. We pray. We ask Jesus to come and help us. So to those who raised their hands just now, I want to encourage you, why don't you come down to this altar here tonight and we'll have some ladies pray for the girls and we'll have some of the men come and pray for the boys. Those who raised their hands and said, I'm just going through some, some tough times right now. I need somebody praying for me. I need, need a man or two to come up here and pray. That's good. I wonder how many how many of y'all want to pray for your mom and dad? Pray for your moms and dads and your family. Why don't y'all come on up here to the altar? You ladies will have a have a lady come and pray for y'all. And your boys, you 
I come up here and last time I pray with y'all. This is good. This is good. Adults, this is this applies for you too. Whatever you have need of, this altar is This is still a church service. This is still a church service. Maybe you want to come tonight. Maybe you want to come tonight and just thank Jesus for being so good to you. How many of y'all glad that you've got a, a house or a home that you can go to? Glad that you've got clothes that you can wear and you got shoes on your feet. You got plenty to eat. You got people to care about you. God's good to us. And sometimes it's good just to go to the altar and pray and spend time thanking Jesus for being so good to you. If you want to do that, you can come tonight and pray and, and, ask, and tell the Lord thank you for all that He's done for you. While all these are up here praying, every head bowed, every eye closed, while these are up here praying, I'm going to pray. And everybody, let's keep our heads bowed and our eyes closed, okay? And let's all pray, okay? Dear Lord, we thank You for this day. God, we thank You for this week of Vacation Bible School. Lord, we thank You, Lord, for the past two nights. And thank You, Lord, for tonight. God, we thank You for uh, just blessing us and being so good to us. God, we thank You, for, uh, Lord, for the, the, the preachers that have stood up this week and have uh, opened up the Bible, Lord, and shared Your Word with these kids. God, I thank You, Lord, for uh, how Your Word always speaks to us. And God, we thank You for the miracles of Jesus that we can read in the Bible. And, we know that Jesus is the same today that He can still perform miracles in our lives. God, I pray, Lord, for these that are up here that uh, are wondering about salvation. God, I pray that You help them to understand it and, and to put their faith and their trust in the Gospel to be saved. God, I pray for these that these, these young people, Lord, and adults too that have raised their hands and said, just going through a difficult time right now. God, we know that You're able. The, the passage of Scripture that Brother Jonathan mentioned here tonight, is exactly right. We have not because we ask not. So Lord, these kids, they've raised their hands and saying that they, they need You to help them. So Lord, I ask You to, to move in their lives and to touch them and bless them and bless their families. Lord, some of them up here praying for their moms and dads and family and friends. God, I pray, Lord, You know the situations and God, I pray that Your will be done in their lives. God, I pray that You touch all of these kids that are here tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that You help them to stay faithful to church and and to keep coming to church so they can learn more about You and so they can grow up and be strong Christians so that they can tell others about what Jesus Christ has done for them. God, I pray, Lord, that You touch and You bless all of our workers. God, all those that have helped out this week, so many folks have pitched in and helped. And God, it's been so good. And Lord, I thank You so much for that. God, I pray that You touch every person here tonight. God, I pray that You just have Your will and Your way in our hearts and our lives. Lord, I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of y'all enjoyed the Bible lesson I read your hand? A very good Bible lesson. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what you like to do last night. Okay. If you enjoyed the Bible lesson, Stay with them, and when they come back in here, 
You have the authority to tell them to be quiet and be seated, okay? And all the mill workers, same thing, okay? Just stay with the boys each, each place that they go, and it'll go real smooth, okay? Uh, and then, when we went to tell everybody about this, Friday night is going to be the big night. Friday night is going to be the big night. I want to encourage everybody, everybody to be here tomorrow night, be back Friday night. If you got more friends that you can invite and bring, bring them, because it's going to be really good tomorrow night. But then Friday night is going to be the big night, because Friday night we're going to have a couple different special things going on. Okay, We're going to have gift bags for all the kids on Friday night. Okay, I'm excited about that. Y'all excited about the gift bags? Yeah! Friday night, we'll have a police car down here yeah. and a fire truck down here, and everybody will be able to see it and hear the horns and the sirens, see the lights and all that good stuff. And uh, you may be able to get to turn the, the lights on or the sirens on. I don't know. We'll see what they got for us when they get here. That'll be on Friday night, and we're having pizza Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. not going to want to miss it, okay? Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray, so I need everybody quiet. And everybody still, we're going to pray. And what we'll do is when we get through praying, I'm going to line the girls up first. Tonight, girls, y'all will line up at that door to go do arts and crafts first. Once I line them up, the boys, I'll line y'all up for y'all to go eat spaghetti first, okay? Alright. Alright, I'm going to get one of the lady workers to their door and so that way all the girls can line up and guide them out. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm going to get one of the male workers to go ahead and line up over here. Alright, boys, remember, I'm going to line the girls up first and then I'll line y'all up, okay? Alright, bow your heads, close your eyes, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the good service. Thank you for the soul saved. Thank you for the good time that we've had so far. Lord, please bless this food. Bless the hands prepared it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Boys, remain seated. Girls, go ahead and line up. Bye. Alright boys, wall, go ahead and line up. Wall, line up. Make sure